you see it a lot in this neighborhood. There's a lot of kids on bikes, yeah. a lot of kids on scooters, a lot of kids outside. They're even climbing trees. These kids the next door, they climb trees, which yeah. you've never seen before. Rarely. You know, yeah. when I was a kid, that's all we would do. Climb trees, yep. build tree forts, yep. build forts in the woods. Ride bikes. Ride bikes. Yeah. Yep. It was like, it was like a sub, it was like a subculture. Like yeah. just, you know, yeah. that you don't, I think it's a subculture now because you don't see it as much. Right. You know, yeah. if I'm even using that, that term in the right, in the right frame, if that's what a subculture is, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think there's probably a lot of subcultures out there that, you know, most people aren't even familiar with or, like, that, would, like, like, or th that would even think of, right? Like so, furries? Like furries, for example. Um, I think for you, a subculture that is well known on this podcast, it's a subculture. You have a big stick up your ass about it. Is men playing with toys? True. Is that a subculture or is that an addiction? Um, I don't know. Maybe it is a subculture. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's probably a, I think it's probably a, a subculture, collectors, right? I mean, there's probably that whole sure. okay. subculture out there that is collecting this stuff that you and I- Collecting is the subculture. Collecting, I guess, would be the subculture. I think collecting is, collecting is more of a community. Yeah. Well, I guess this is where- if you're in a subculture, you're probably like, that's my community is this subculture. Yeah. 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 I mean, my brother, I would say, eh, kind of collects pinball machines. Okay. Yeah. So he's got about five or six, I believe. Um, but again, man, that's a whole community. That's a whole subculture that these guys are just in to these pinball machines. Pinball machines. Yeah. Pinball machines. And it's cool because it's kind of an 80s thing, but they still make pinball machines today. And he has a few that they've made, you know, as of recently, but again, the whole thing is just that that is a subculture. There's Facebook pages for it and this and that and uh, that, right? All that sort of thing. I wonder if Facebook kind of really helped keep subcultures alive. If it's like, that's where the communities go, you can build a whole, you know. That's where a lot of it is for sure, you know, is Facebook communities. And then there's other outlets as well, web pages and whatnot that you can become part of the community, but you know, Facebook certainly plays a, a big part in that. Yeah. So what are some cool, what are the pinball machines that he has? Like what's, Oh man, what does he have? Um, he's got F 14 Tomcat, which is a really cool machine from the eighties. Um, he's got a pinball machine called radical, um, which is a, uh, skateboarding, uh, pinball machine from the eighties. Really cool. Very rare. I say very rare. I think it's pretty rare. Um, He's got a World Cup soccer pinball machine. Um, and then he's got one um, Monster Bash, I believe is what it's called. And then he's got like another one. So he's got like five or six. They're all pretty much the same game. Yeah. Right. Don't let the ball go past the paddles. <laughs> Am I wrong? I mean, can you say there's this? a little bit more to it than that. I mean, there is a there is a way to win it. Obviously, that's the yes. You know, well, want, that's the goal. It's that's like goal. air hockey. Sure, right? You got to make sure the thing stays on the board. Right. I think the easy thing to do is just go and hit the flippers. You don't really know what you're doing. You're just trying to prevent the oh, ball from that's, going. That's what I'm talking but about. But there is a strategy behind it. I do all of this with no strategy. Yeah. I I am just I'm the flipper guy. Of I course. am I am banging those fucking things. Yeah. I'm just constantly. That's what it is. You know, it's what most people do. Yeah. And whenever I go to his house and play, I mean, I'm, I typically am doing that. But when I'm playing with him, he's like, oh, you got to hit it here. or You got to hit it there. Or this light's flashing over there. You need to. So that's that where it comes into where that ball comes down. The channel hits that flipper and you balance it there. And you know how much, how much, you know, pressure to give it. Sure. To maybe it hits a different trajectory yeah and if you walked into any 80s arcade back in the day i mean there'd be a wall of pinball machines right you know you walk into and i mean arcades they're bringing those back you know some of these arcades like there's a few here in charlotte and yeah. you can go in and play some of those classic pinball machines and um not a big gamer myself but they're cool i mean pinball machines are fun so yeah. if i go into an arcade that's typically where i'm going to gravitate to like an 80s arcade i'm going to go to the pinball machines i'm yeah. not a gamer man it's not my thing and one of the reasons why i think i'm not and i don't i don't keep up with it at all you may know more about it than i do but man dude these games appear to just be sick these days as far as the graphics go and that's kind of one of the reasons one of the reasons why i've never bought one is because it looks so cool and i'm scared if i buy one I'm just going to sit there for hours and play it just because it's so damn that's cool. A, that's a good point. And I would also, 
want to master it. Right. So yeah, you'd be there just day and night. Yeah. I think I probably would get hooked on it now too. Yeah. Because the graphics sucked when I was a kid. Right. It looked like shit. And now it's just so incredible. It was all man. 8 bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, now it's just incredible. And I think to your point, to master it, yes, you will probably be there forever because it's going to take forever to master it. I wonder if there's a imagine. subculture of people that only play like the Atari 2600 or right. like a subculture of people that just do nothing but play old 80s games. I'm sure. Like tournaments. Yeah. There's got to be a tournament. It's got to be. It's out there. With that terrible joystick. and Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A black joystick with the... I think that would be the true Orange definition button. of a subculture or it's somebody that likes something that's so obscure. You're like, that's, that's a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting, man. I talked to a buddy of mine yesterday that lives out, out in LA or in the LA area. He's got a YouTube page. He's got a podcast and, uh, um, his thing, man is, uh, name of his page is Polynesian pop. And his thing is tiki culture, right? Maha, like, Whatever those drinks are, Maha, whatever they're called, what is Mai Hai, Mai Hai, is it Mai Hai or Mai Tais, Mai Tais or whatever, and uh, just tiki culture, and that's his thing. And when I was speaking to him yesterday, um, and I never really asked him this, I was like, Adrian, is the whole tiki? There's like a, he's like, dude, it is absolutely huge. Tiki culture is huge, right? So I would, it's a subculture. He's getting ready to go to Palm Springs for like this tiki convention, and goes to Hawaii and all this sort of stuff. So it's like a subculture that you and I and most people would probably never even think about, right? But it's a thing. So I would like it. I don't think about it, but I bet if I win, I'd be like, this is freaking awesome. Yeah. Hawaiian shirts. Yep. Right? Yep. The drinks. The drinks. Yeah. Going into certain cities where you find that tiki bar vibe. You walk in and set up like a tiki bar. Yeah. So he does that when he vlogs, you know, he finds the tiki bar type places mm -hmm. and, oh, here's a tiki bar and it's just wild. There is something great about like, if you go on vacation, you're on a beach and you see like that tiki bar set up, you kind of, you're like, I want to be there. Yeah. You kind of gravitate towards it. Yeah. Yeah. And the music, this, I guess it's a, it's a like Hawaiian. Like kind Hawaiian of, type yeah. music, I guess. Yeah, Polynesian. Yeah. 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 It's kind of warm, I guess. Kind of welcoming. Oh yeah, yeah, there's something to I'm it. Sure. I'm sure it's not a lot of assholes that uh, <laughs> that are in the tiki. I, I'm sure it's an all our welcome policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I ever. I don't know if I have a subculture that I'm like, you know, would take a vacation and be like, oh, I'm going to go to this convention or where all these people are hanging out. Right. You know, doing this thing. Yeah. I don't know. I have yeah. To think about. I think my subculture is being left alone. You know, peace and quiet. If there is a subculture for that. Yeah, I can't think of a subculture myself either that I'm into. Right. Or that would be considered that. No, yeah, I've known I you for a long time. I've never, never, never once have I ever heard you say or me say to you, oh, well, I can't this weekend. I'm going to go. Right. To this. Toy convention. Right. right. This toy convention <laughs> or the, there's a tiki bar convention or right. there's a, you know. But I guess it could be cool. You know, yeah. to be a part of a community and, and involved with something like Absolutely. that. I just don't have anything that, you know, I'm connected to like that, I guess. You know, I can't think of anything at least. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe I should get out there and explore. Just thinking, I was just thinking here, not paying attention as you were speaking. Because <laughs> you were thinking about something else. That's my You were thinking about your next comment. Is, would you say archaeology is a subculture? Urban explorers. I would say urban explorer is like what Ghost Nerd locations hunters. or uh, Scott on tape. It's, it's urban exploring is very similar to that. That's a subculture. Ghost hunting is that a hobby or is that or is it a curiosity? Because sometimes whether you believe in ghost hunting or not, I do. I do believe in paranormal stuff, so I'm on board. But I've never sought it out. But I've had experiences. So in that sense. It's found me. So I don't know if it's, maybe it becomes a subculture because once it, once it happens to you once, you're like, oh my God, let's, let's go find a haunted house. Let's go. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, perhaps I guess it, it could be a, yeah. a subculture. There's clearly a community for that. I'm sure. Right. I'm sure there's a huge community that you and I don't know about. We know about the videos on YouTube. Sure. You know, all that sort of stuff, but I'm sure there's a community of people that are just, you know, right tied into it and meeting up and, yep. you know, doing all that sort of stuff. They, th that community meets up. Hey, here's the best haunted places to go to. Then there's another community that meets up and they're the ones that 
follow those guys around and bang on the walls outside and scare the <laughs> shit out of them. Right. Is it that you and I are maybe just that boring to not be involved? Because here's the thing, right? You like ghost stuff. I like ghost stuff. I like um, I like locations. I like grave sites. I like what Scott. I like tiki is. bars. I like tiki bars, but I'm not into it enough to really dive that deep into it. But I dig it. So is it that I'm well, antisocial or is no, it? You, so you are a conscientious observer. Yeah. As the big Lebowski would say. There you go. So I like to watch it from afar. I don't want to get involved. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Enough. Right. 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 But now I'm thinking, am I boring? That's what I was thinking about. That I'm boring? Yeah. No, not that you are, but... Uh, I do believe, though, however, with you, knowing you, that if somebody were to call you tonight and said, hey, you look, you know, five miles from here, this this haunted house, and I believe you would be in. I believe you, you'd probably go, yeah, let's go check it out. I would think. The key the key part of that sentence is <laughs> it's five miles from here. Right, exactly. Anything outside of that? No, no I'm because saying no. I, I, I love to, I do. I love traveling. I love traveling when it's up to me. I love traveling, you know, plan it out all that kind of stuff. If there's something cool where I'm going to go, okay, let's do it. Yeah. But if it's not up to me, so if someone were to say, hey, three hours away, there's this haunted house. Because I don't want to be in a car that long. Yeah. You know. Completely get it. I, I As I get older, I'm kind of more like a Larry David style. For sure. Where it's like, if it's not going to come to me, I just don't worry about it. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's not, not that it's not important to me because I probably would miss out. I definitely could get FOMO huge yeah. on things. Yeah. So, you know, if there's like a, um, you know, I just, I just recently just started thinking about that, like fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as you get older, you don't really care about that, but then you live in a city where there's a lot of really, really cool things going on and you do, you, you see people on Instagram doing it like, Oh, I didn't know about that. So <laughs> that's my fault. Yeah, I'm not engaged in the community. So I started on Instagram following, you know, anything about the city, any any influencers that are doing things about what to do in the city. I'd, I'd go. Yeah, I'd go for like the first day. Yeah. Right. I don't want to go on the day that it's the most packed. I kind of want to go because I could say I went, mm -hmm. but I might not have gone on the best day. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So then I'd, I feel like, oh, OK, I didn't miss out. But yeah, it was fun. Is that an age thing? You think? Oh, no, I've always been like that. Have you? I've always been. Really? I've always been. Uh, I don't really care about that. But then I, I've i always also had like the fear of missing out. Like, well, yeah, oh, I probably should have went and did that. You know, that's interesting that you say that, because back in the day, or at least I've never known you to be that way. Like you'll go and do like you want to be out and you want to meet you, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? So it seems like now you're a bit more reserved. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Is that more of an age thing? But you're saying that you've always been like that. I've well, really wait, never... wait, 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 well, let me maybe I misunderstood. But I've always been like what? Like not wanting to maybe go out as much or go for right. the day or, and, you know, and just kind of hold it back. And that's what I'm saying. Is that like an age thing? Because I think knowing you from years past, you'd go and go oh. and go and go. Unless I'm wrong in saying that. I Well, there's another way to look at this too. If you look at age as a spectrum, when you are in your mid to late 20s and you're in a really cool city and there's a lot going on, you want to be there all the time. Yeah. But then when you're there, you are in the back of your head going, this, all right. Yeah. I guess I'm here because I felt like I had to be here. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to be at this event, but nobody would, everyone, nobody would stop talking about it. So here I am. All right. I'm not missing anything. Yeah. However, then a couple of weeks go by, there's another event and he's like, I don't want to go. And then that's the one like, oh, you should have been there. Yeah. So then the next one comes up and yeah. you're always missing it. Yeah. Right, you're always missing either the excitement or you went on the wrong day, but who has time to go for three days to a fe like festival subculture? Like I'm not. Yeah, there you go. I've never been into like oh, there's a music festival. Yeah. Well, I want to look at the roster and go, okay, well, it looks like Sunday's my day. Yeah. Oh, but Saturday there's this band. Yeah, there's 20 bands on Saturday. Right. Right. I, I don't want to see any of these bands. I right. want to see that band on Sunday. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna oh, we're gonna go all weekend. All right, well, I just you know, yeah. I'm not gonna do not that. my deal because I'll be miserable Friday and Saturday. Sure, yeah, and I'll be over it. This yeah. is the same way if I go to Vegas. For yeah. Vegas, I'm good for a day and a half in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Wasn't like that when the first time I went. So is it an age thing? That's what I'm saying. 
it could be an it could be a uh, experience thing. Yeah. Because I would love to. I honestly, even at my I, at my age, I would love to go three days to a rock festival. Yeah. But I'll be miserable after half of the first day. Yeah. Been to Vegas a few times, man. Not my thing. Not into it. No. Don't dig it at all. Not into gambling. Not my thing. Too many people. Yeah. It's literally Vegas is just colorful noise. Yeah. Just obnoxiousness. It, it's just obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, <laughs> I always want to have it both ways. The idea, the idea of Vegas is so sexy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Hey, man, we're going to go to Vegas for the weekend. Oh, okay, that'd be fun. Yeah. You get there, you're in the desert. You're like, oh, this is great. I, I love the, I love the desert weather. I do. I love the desert. Mm. Um, I love Palm Springs. Yeah. You know, I love, um, I do. I like the desert. So going there, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I could do, I could do this. But then when you're there, if you want to go to the hotel, because you got to go to a good hotel. Yeah. And I would say Vegas is filled. It's 50-50. The nicer hotels are going to be more expensive, but they're going to be nicer. Mm-hmm. And those are the pools you want to be at. Unfortunately, that's where everyone else is too. Right. Yeah. You can't have your cake and eat it too. No, no, no. You can't go to Vegas. And, and so if you want to go to the, I would say if you want to go to the desert, be by a pool and enjoy yourself, Palm Springs is the deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but Vegas, I do like to gamble. I do like to gamble. Mm-hmm. So... And I think Las Vegas casinos are much different than Indian casinos, mm-hmm. much different than Atlantic City casinos. Yeah. I'm sure people would argue with me on that, but I know a couple of years ago I was at, I was in Las Vegas just for the weekend. Yeah. And I spent most of my time, you know, playing blackjack. Yeah. Had a blast. Yeah. Won some, lost some. some. Yeah, sure. Won some more. Yeah. Lost a lot more. Yep. Yeah. But I like the hotels. Yeah. You know, I am not a fan of Airbnb. Really? Airbnb. Really? All those like, you know, I don't, dude, I'm telling you, I don't know. Are you a fan of Airbnb? Dude, I can't tell you the last time I stayed in a hotel. It's always Airbnb. Well, I don't want to call them out. It's it's those ones that are like that. There's other yeah. ones that are like that too, right? Yeah. So those styles. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going that you're that you're enjoying the Airbnbs? L.A. Um, if we ever travel to the mountains, typically here in North Carolina, we'll typically find an Airbnb. Um, I'm not opposed to hotels at all. I'm not like, oh no, I'm not staying in a hotel. But we just always seem to gravitate towards Airbnbs for whatever reason. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've always worked out. I've always enjoyed you know where we've stayed. My preference would not be that. Why? What's the stick up your well, ass the, about? The, the circumstances that I would be for it are if I'm going somewhere where there's a house that has the most amazing view, if I'm going to the mountains yeah, and the hotel is in the city, but there's an Airbnb in the mountains, quiet, yeah, amazing view, boom, I'll take the Airbnb. Gotcha. All day. Yeah. But then even after one night, it's like, I should have got a hotel. The pictures, all, it's it's almost like Tinder. It's almost like a dating app. Yeah. It's like you get there and the pictures are like, I thought this was a bedroom. Well, yeah. it looked like a bedroom on the thing. No, this is like a side room, but they shot it with an eight millimeter lens. It looks huge. It's yeah. like a closet. Yeah. Shit's falling apart. You know what I mean? Like the pictures make it look like this great thing, but it's just tchotchkes in the house. And I'll tell you this story. Went to Nashville last October with a group mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. Well, Everybody was coupled up except me. So, but the the place said it sleeps twelve. So there's there's four couples. There's mm-hmm. eight, and then so there's nine of us. And I call my brother. And I was like, dude, I think there's only four bedrooms in this place. So we get there. Everybody, you know, chips in like they all do with with the groups and stuff. Yeah. And it, it's a lot different when you go with adults that are in their fifties because it's not about well, I paid this much and I paid this sure. much. Everybody just kind of chips in. They yeah. go. We get there. There's four bedrooms. Yeah. Now, it does sleep 12 because one bedroom had bunk beds in it and another right. bed. So that bedroom's got five beds in it. Yeah. Those Airbnbs in Nashville, those things, they sleep 12 for a reason. Yeah, right. 
you know, girls on a bachelorette party, they don't care if there's five girls in a room sleeping on bunk beds. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we only picked it because we all wanted to be together. There's nine of us as opposed to having two different th- th- hotels, this and that. It made sense. Yeah. And I was, I was kind of, not that I was against the Airbnb, but I knew what I was getting into. And I even told my brother, here's how this is going to go down, dude. It sleeps 12 bachelorettes. Yep. Okay, so good. Fact, it does sleep 12. Yeah. I already know what's going to happen. I'm going to get there and I'm going to go get a hotel. Yeah, for you sure. Know? I already know. And also the the uh, the bathrooms were in two of the bedrooms. There you go. Right. So now people are sleeping. I got to use the bathroom. Yep. It's be in a bedroom that's locked. It's funny that you say that. My next thing was going to be, yeah, what was the bathroom situation like? Yeah, right. And you're not 18 years old anymore. You're a grown adult, right? Need your space, need your... <laughs> Yeah. How many bathrooms were there? Were there just two? So there were three bedrooms that had bathrooms in it. Like en suite. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. There was not a powder room bathroom, okay. which was strange. Yeah. For how many people? Well, there were four bedrooms. Right. But how many people were in the group? Nine. Nine. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a so lot. So then I would just go to the hotel. And also, you're not... Here's the thing, too. Well, I don't get the hotel. I get to Airbnb. We can hang out. Well, we're in Nashville. We're not hanging out in the Airbnb. Right. And part of the reason we're not hanging out in the Airbnb is because there's no, the amenities aren't there. Yeah, sure. Whether it's the coffee maker or the the furniture's broken. Yeah. Or the TV. You can't get online. There's right. no, like, like. Yeah. so if you're never really going to be in there, just get a hotel. Yeah. And just go back to sleep. And yeah. you're going to have a better experience sleeping because the bed's not broken. There's a bathroom you can use. Right. There's fresh, uh, linen yeah and fresh towels yeah right you yeah. don't have to do all the laundry yeah there's a lot that you're doing on your own on an airbnb it's a good point i'm just not a fan yeah not a fan i get it completely get it and the fact with the airbnb we had to actually message the person because we got there there were three one bed was broken fortunately it was in a room with three other beds yeah so yeah. Yeah. the couple that was in it didn't use that bed <laughs> but it had to be known that we didn't break it yeah you know, yeah. Upstairs on the deck of the of the patio, they had a gas grill. Mm-hmm. Right. We get up there, no propane. Right. There's a note. Yeah. Oh, uh, we don't provide propane because people leave it on. Well, yeah, the, the kids leave it on. We're freaking fifty years old. Right. You go to Nashville, <clears throat> man. It's the same thing as Vegas. Yeah. After two nights on Broadway yeah. and two nights eating barbecue and burgers, like we're adults. Right. Maybe we maybe it'd be cool to go back to the Airbnb. Yeah. Right? What's one big sell point about the Airbnb? We can hang out there. Yeah. We can, we got the grill. There's yeah. a fire pit. Yeah. Well, the fire pit's propane. Yeah. There's no propane in the fire pit. Yeah. There's no propane in the grill. Yeah. So now why even go get groceries? Because we can't cook it. Right. You can cook it in, there's there's the stove and stuff. So we did breakfast. The kitchen, sure. Yeah. I feel like I'm ranting about this, but we didn't go get propane. Yeah. Because we'd have to go get a freaking thing. And then what yeah. we, we're only there for the weekend. Yeah. So now what do we do? Leave it for somebody else? Right. Yeah. You know, the next people didn't leave one for us. For sure. So why, why, you know, so if I, if you have an Airbnb, maybe you should not put these amenities on the website. Yep. And then when they get there, oh, they're not here. Right. These are all things that we looked at when we got this Airbnb. Yeah. Oh, look, there's the whole rooftop. The fire pit. Uh, Yeah. No propane. Yeah. It's annoying. Poor customer service. You're not going to find that at a hotel. You go out to the hotel pool or the hotel area, th- there's going to be propane and there's going to be a fire pit. For sure. Yeah. Yep. And if there's not, you can go to the front desk and potentially get it. There's somebody there. There's somebody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one annoying thing that we have encountered a couple of times, which is just, dude, it pisses me off so bad and I just, it just makes no sense to me, is no coffee maker in the place. It's like, you got to be freaking kidding me, man. How do you not have a coffee maker? Right. It's just sitting here thinking about it, it just makes my blood boil. It's like, and, come on. And there's, and there's probably a note somewhere that they say, well, we used to have a coffee maker, but somebody stole it. So now you are all punished. Right. Because of that one person. <clears throat> yeah. Except I, <laughs> I did stay a couple of years ago. I went to Nashville. I forget the name of this hotel, but it doesn't matter. There was two of them. One that was by the university and one that was off Broadway. Okay. The Uber brought me to the to the location on Broadway. Okay. So when I got there, they're like, oh, we don't have you in here. I was like, ah, but here's my reservation. They're like, oh, that's at the university location. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I go, okay, well, that I go, that's fine. They said, well, we can get you, we can get you in here. Do you want to stay here? It'd be the same, same price, you know? So they looked and they said, okay, there's a room available. Mm-hmm. Don't have any windows. Wow. 
you never know how important a window is in a hotel yeah. until you wake up in one without it. That's wild. So this hotel, it used to be like a warehouse building. Usually all the rooms in a hotel, when they build a hotel, they're all on the outside, yeah, right? Yeah. So they have windows. This yeah. room had no windows in it. It Strange. was like a prison cell, but it was great inside. Yeah. When I got there at night, I didn't miss the window. Right. So we had gone out. We had gone out one night and then I'm back at the hotel and all of a sudden it's like pitch dark and there's no windows. Yeah. And I'm hearing noise and I'm hearing stuff in the hallway and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. I'm thinking it's like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I look at my watch. It's like 1130 in yeah. the morning. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. the morning. Yeah. No windows. Had no idea. Yeah. There's no sunlight coming in. It sure. was just as dark when I walked in there at like 10 o'clock at night. Yep. I go out in the hallway and yeah. I'm like, holy shit, I've missed like the whole morning. Yeah, everybody's up. Yeah. Everybody's up, people moving. Yeah. And then I went down and I was like, do you have anything with the window? No, nah, we're sold out. All of a sudden. Wow. Fuck. That was tough. That's wild. That was tough. That's literally wild. I've never seen a hotel without a window. I've never stayed in a hotel room without windows. I think I that's got wild. the one room that was available because nobody wanted it. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. Dude, it's depressing. You I'm don't sure understand how much sunlight. Yeah. I'm sure it is. It means to your mental state. Yeah, yeah. Till you stay in a hotel <laughs> no, a window. in Nashville with no windows. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. 